You doing good? I'm so good. I just had a burrito. I'm I'm good. <laughs> that, that hair is looking fantastic. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm having fun with it. I uh, I wear hats all the time because of uh, you know hiding. What's that thing that they call? It? They call it like um, you know people like fool people online. They're not really the person. Oh uh, there's a name for it, like hat. Uh, hat fishing. Hat fishing. Hat fishing. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> people I will turn my my lives. They'll be like, "Are you hat fishing right now? Are you hat fishing?" <laughs> I like wearing hats too because my roots are coming in strong, so it hides my roots. Ah. Uh, uh, no, I think you look great though. Uh, congrats on all your success too, by the way, so far. Of course. Sweet but psycho, um, you know kings and queens, and uh, your new song "Maybe You're the Problem." Tell me about "Maybe You're the Problem" and uh, the process that you know. How did that song come about? There's always a story to every song, right? So "Maybe You're the Problem" um, is a personal experience, and last year, I mean, the entire album is about my life. It's I've never written an album like this because I didn't really have drama in my life until last year. <laughs> Welcome, um, welcome to the drama club. I know. Hello, <laughs> I am here in the uh, breakup club. No, um, I think basically I that was all I could write about. The morning I went into the studio before I wrote Maybe You're the Problem, I was so sad and angry because I was just like in the situation where I just felt like I, I'm like, why am I always taking the blame? Why am I always apologizing? And then I kind of reevaluated everything on the drive over to the studio. And then I heard this beat for Maybe You're the Problem. And I went in the studio and I sang like the entire chorus, like lyrics and melody in two seconds, like the entire thing. I was like, but with you, it's always my fault, blah, 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 blah. And then afterwards I'm like, okay, next song, it's probably nothing. And everybody in the studio was like, no, that is a really good chorus. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. no, that was just my therapy. <laughs> I was like screaming to, at the microphone, um, but it happened to be, you know, now the first single of the second album. I bet so many people can relate to you too, right? I mean, that's the thing about music is that it's so relatable. Like so many people are going through things that you go through and you're a real person, right? Like you're Ava Max, but you're still like a person at the end of the day, you have feelings, you go through breakups, you go through struggles in life and uh, they may just look a little bit different than ours. But like, I feel like people connect so much to musicians and, and one of the reasons why people love going to concerts and it's great that live music is back, right? Because it's so therapeutic for people. Like, you don't even realize well you do realize because you hear the stories and stuff but like how much it means to people for you know to people that they go on to see Ava Max um yeah. and how much you've done and maybe you've talked someone off a ledge before with your music you know it's just it, it's pretty incredible how important and how you know moving music is and uh I'm sure you're connecting to, to so many people with with your album because so many people go through that stuff yeah, I mean, the last album was about me coming up in the industry and how hard it was for like years and years and years. No one like helped me. No one wanted anything to do with me. They're like, oh, you can sing. Great. Everybody can sing. You know, like it was just that kind of vibe for years. And then finally, with Super Psycho coming out, I started writing female empowerment anthems like Kings and Queens, who's laughing now, because that's how I felt in the moment. I was just like, you know what? F everybody who didn't help me. I'm still going to keep going and I'm still going to be the best. And I don't care. Like, and I think that's how I felt on the first album, like heaven and hell. Literally, I went through heaven and hell <laughs> yeah. and tried to try and get to where I'm at. And then this next album, it's like I go through this breakup. No one knows I was in a very long relationship because I never, I never talked about my personal life. And so last year, everything came crumbling down and I started dating for the first time and it got really weird. And it was just like, <laughs> you know, like I yeah. even catfished someone on Tinder. Like I reverse catfished someone. I put a fake picture up because I couldn't have a Tinder. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, you know what? I want to go on a date. <laughs> so I'm just like, why can't I go on a date? <laughs> like, so I started yeah. like making this profile. It's, it's like, I started like experiencing life almost for like the first time last year for real. Like, and it, I, but not only that, like my heart got broken. Like I wrote all these songs that I never thought I'd write about. I would always like listen to Taylor Swift talk about her personal life. I'm like, oh, I'll never do that. I'll never talk about my personal life. That's too much. And, and then here I am all of there last year. Yeah. My entire next album is all about me, all about my personal life. And it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> but that's good, right? Doesn't that make you, it kind of makes you like feel better, right? When you just 
get to write and with your emotions and and get it out there for everybody you know it's therapy it literally is my therapy. yeah for you and for other people too um oh. yeah it's funny when you mentioned tinder like did you ever watch that tinder swindler thing on oh my god i just watched it it's wild <laughs> i feel so bad for those women oh man did they get swindled like hundreds of thousands i don't want to give it away if you end up i know i've watched it it's, it's insane it's it's really crazy. Um, and the fact that he's not in prison right now, like he actually has a TikTok and he goes live on his TikTok. And no, no, it's no, like, no, no. I have to see this. This is crazy. He does, he does. And people go like, uh, why aren't you in prison? It's unbelievable. Are you uh, kidding? He's not in prison. That sounds insane. Well, at the end of the documentary, it said, um, you know, he he was in prison for like two or three years or whatever. Then he got out. And now he's dating some like Brazilian supermodel or something like that or I something. I can't. I can't. This yeah, I, I was like, who would date him? Like, what the red flags everywhere? Oh God, it's horrible. And like, I have yet to watch Inventing Anna, but I heard it's similar. Oh yeah, no, that's good too. Well, oh, let's not talk about that. This is about you. I only have like a couple of minutes with you. No, I like it. All day, right? <laughs> Forget me. Um, congrats too, by the way, on uh, on being one of the most streamed artists of 2022 so far. Female artist of 2022. That's that's pretty great. You know, for the people that you're talking about. The, you know, the people that were telling you no as you were coming up in the industry. Isn't it great when, like, the occasional person that said no, like, follows you on Instagram? Oh, it's the best. Like, I mean, it's still you know, like, haters now. Haters I, and trolls are always on me 24-7. I'm just like, I see y'all, and it doesn't bother me anymore because I'm just like, yeah. I love what I do. I, you know, everything I write about is so personal now, especially now on this next album that I'm just like, there's nothing that like haters, you know how they say haters can't stop you if you don't let them like basically that's true like don't read the comments. Don't yep. don't go into that black hole. <laughs> oh yeah, it is it is a black hole and and that's the thing too is that like you can't stoop to their level because as soon as you stoop to their level and you fire back or whatever it's like you 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 know they win at that point if you show that it doesn't bother you it's like they and don't they thing, get that action out of that right it's hard because like sometimes i read comments and they're like oh you're not cool you're not cool because you make pop music and it's like you know what i love pop music i've always loved pop music and that doesn't matter and like that it, that doesn't mean you're not cool making pop music and i think people sometimes even on social media have a different like perception of what's cool and like they label even now they label always on social media that's oh, yeah. all social media is and the people that you know talk a lot of crap always have like no profile picture it's like come on bro you're like yeah i know worker. exactly it's like it's like a it's like a <laughs> kale leaf it's like a it's like a apple yeah. <laughs> like it's nothing <laughs> Uh, report, report. Um, so I, I did see when I was looking to see where you grew up, because I'm like, I knew she grew up somewhere in Minnesota and you grew up near Wisconsin uh, or uh, you grew up in Wisconsin, but like Green Bay. But that doesn't make you a Packers fan because you only spent like the first few years of your life, right? You're exactly. Not Packers, right? I grew up in Virginia and I lived in South Carolina. I was born in Wisconsin. I'm a mutt. I'm from like everywhere. And my parents were Albanian immigrants. I'm like, what am I? <laughs> we just want to make sure you're not a Packers fan because Vikings, Packers, it's like, hateful things so yeah, yeah I, need to go, I need to learn more about that <laughs> it's a it's a pretty big rivalry. it's like the red Sox and yankees i mean that that big of a rivalry yeah it's like it's it's a big deal so i just wanted to get on the record you weren't like this diehard packers fan we had to end the interview no i know i'm not i need to go to the <laughs> game though actually yeah lambo feels pretty cool i mean it is pretty cool and then u.s bank stadium that they built a few years ago here in minneapolis is cool too that sounds fun i like going to games uh, What's coming up for Ava in the rest of 2022, 2023? I was looking at your tour stops. You got like a, a few of them, but you got like any type of like official tour, any type of like things you want to just put out there right now? Well, my album's coming out this year, my second oh. album. I'm really excited about that. Um, basically just touring now. The album's almost done. I'm putting the final touches on it this week, actually. And then after this week, I'm like traveling all summer. I have shows. I have I'm, I'm performing um, somewhere in New York that I can't say yet. And I'm announcing the album. I mean, like, I'm just really, really excited. Lots of things coming up. I'm just going to be traveling and I can't wait because it's going to feel like 2019 again, I think. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I thought you were going to drop that, uh, that big bomb on here and, and then this thing was going to go viral. I was like, oh, wait. Oh my shoot. God, I want oh. to. I want <laughs> to so bad. That's okay. Ava Max is one of those people that like her team purposely keeps things away from her because she just, you know, would, would spurt it out. Right. I, I can't lie. I can't tell a lie to save my yeah. life actually. <laughs> right. Let's do a quick lightning round of questions so we can uh, know a little bit more about you. Like random questions that like would normally never come up in an interview. Like for instance, favorite candy bar. 
Oh, Snickers. Ooh, okay. Uh, favorite cereal? Oh, favorite cereal? This is tough. This is, I love cereal. Cookie Crisp. What would be number two? Like, what were you fighting yourself with? Um. Oh, there's like there's a lot. Crispix. I love Crispix. Okay. I have a problem, but I don't eat it all the time. <laughs> okay. Favorite uh, favorite cologne on a guy. I like like the Chanel colognes. They're very okay. good. Like Even Chanel when I'm at the like department store. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, what's your favorite city to visit in the entire world? We're not going to keep it just to the U.S., but like out of the whole world. I there's something about I know it's so like whatever, but like I, I mean not whatever, but like every, I feel like everyone says this. Um, Paris. <laughs> Paris is so romantic. Every time I'm there, I'm just like, oh, I just want a baguette and like have a picnic underneath the Eiffel Tower, which I've never done before. I've been wanting to do that. <laughs> oh, you got to do that. I haven't done it either, but that's not on my bucket list. But if you want to do it, you should do it. I know. I haven't been in Paris like long enough. I'm always working when I'm there. So I haven't been there long enough to go to a store, grab a baguette, go sit under the Eiffel Tower. You know? Well, the next time that you are in Paris, you should just like add an extra day, like tell, okay. you know, they're booking your tour and your stops at like there's at least one or two days in between when you go to Germany or whenever yeah, you know. sorry guys uh, <laughs> I want to eat up again under the Eiffel Tower and that's that <laughs> hey you know it's your life you gotta live it girl uh Thank favorite you. uh favorite sport that'll be the last one what's your favorite sport like if you I grew to... up watching my brother play soccer a lot so okay. soccer is like so a big one I love football too but soccer because I grew up with it a lot so so uh there you go all right Ava Max congrats on uh everything and Congrats on maybe you're the problem. Yes, we love you so much. Oh, that I hair, love you guys. Thank you. That hair is phenomenal. I just, I, you think I could rock it? You think I could rock it? Like, you, know, you can, you can. Here, let's see. I can't. <laughs> Ava, I appreciate you. I know you're busy and thanks for taking the time and we'll talk to okay. you soon. All right. Thank you for having me. All right, see ya.